This is Reformation and Revival Now. I'm Brother Kevin, your Bible teacher. I want to say hello to Brother Dalam and the disciples and to all of our followers on Reformation and Revival Now, covering some very familiar territory that I love to cover ever so often, and that is uh, 2 Peter, the first chapter. And I want to share with you one of the great things, I believe, one of the great passages in all of Scripture. Because this actually will blow you away when you think about it. So we're looking at chapter 1. And we're going to go down to verse 16. And it says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So Peter said, this ain't nothing we made up. We're not talking about Greek mythology. We're not talking about tales and stuff like that. We were eyewitnesses of the majesty of God. And what he's referring to is the um, the transfiguration okay 17 for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from from the most excellent glory this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount so they were there at the mount of transfiguration, which was in the, the, the other gospel, the gospels, probably Matthew, I'm pretty sure of Matthew and Mark and Luke, I'm pretty sure it's there in all three. Okay, so Peter is saying we were there with him when he was transfigured, when we saw this glory. Now, watch this. And it says, we have a more sure word of prophecy, more sure than hearing the voice and of the Father speak from heaven and, and more sure word than, than hearing that voice and Jesus' body. Listen, we have, a, we have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. No matter what type of of experience you have or experience that the apostle had the apostles had none of it compares to you being born again all of the prophets talked about the day when Ezekiel 36 26 would be fulfilled and men would be born again and their sins blotted out and they'd be made new creatures in Christ Jesus there is nothing more glorious than that and they saw Jesus transfigured, and they heard the voice of God the Father speaking from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son. And they were with him when his clothes were so white, was whiter than anything that could be made white on earth, than any fuller soap or anything like that. And he said that, I'm going to give you a more sure word of prophecy. That day star arising in your heart, that revelation of Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory, Jesus alive in your heart, Jesus alive in your life, that is the more sure word of prophecy. When Jesus comes in to live, remember that and don't forget that. that there's nothing greater than Christ living in you. Knowing there's 20. Verse 20, knowing this, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And that's just saying that you just they, 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 the people, the prophets of the old didn't just randomly speak. God came upon them and they prophesied Christ. And they talked about the things in the Old Testament that we're discussing now. Ezekiel 36, 26 probably shares about the new birth, entire sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit all in one, probably maybe even clearer than the New Testament. I mean, these were the prophets that didn't see the whole picture, but God gave them Christ, gave them revelation of what the, the Christian age would be like and being born again would be like. That's why we have Jeremiah, and that's why we have, even Moses talked about, the day would come when Israel's hearts would be circumcised, their hearts, the inside. Moses prophesied about it. Jeremiah prophesied about it. Ezekiel prophesied about it. 
Isaiah prophesied about it. And they were all pointing to Jesus Christ. Well, anyway, I sure hope that you enjoyed this going over first, uh, Second Peter with me, first chapter. Uh, that's all I'm going to speak on today. I would like for you to really make uh, a habit as I am. Um, I want you to join me. I'm going to be meditating um, this month on Second Peter. And uh, if God gives me anything, I certainly will let you know. But this has got to be one of the best passages of Scripture for straight-up Christian living. And what it means to bring forth fruit. You know, have you ever, ever hear the statement, nobody's perfect. But Jesus wants us to be. He says, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, you have to remember, being perfect to God, God is, is holy and blameless. He has no flaws. So he's not saying to us who have frailty about having this legalistic perfection. He's talking about that perfect attitude that he can work with because it's the blood that makes us holy. But because the blood does make us holy and accepted, we can now grow in that character. How? By adding to our faith. This is our review. We add to our like precious faith virtue. We add to our virtue or excellence revelation knowledge. We add to our revelation knowledge self-control or personal discipline. We add to that temperance, patience. We add to that patience, godliness or God compatibility. We add to that godliness, brotherly kindness, that love, that spiritual love of family. And then we add to that love, that family love, that brotherly love, Agape love, self-sacrificing. I'll lay it all down for my brother and sister. I'll lay it all down for somebody that doesn't even like me. That means you're taking on the nature of Christ. Now when Jesus says, be ye perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect, this is really what he's referring to for us as, as Christians. We growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ by adding these things to our faith and allowing these things by the grace of God through Jesus. Because remember, it says that these great exceeding precious promises give us the ability to access God's divine qualities through the promises. This is not something that we work. We, by our faith, we're accessing through God's promises his qualities. And this is why Peter is saying, add to your faith. Because he wants us to grow up in the full expression of who the Father is, of who Jesus is. So anyway, I sure hope you enjoyed it. I always enjoyed talking about uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. It's one of my favorite chapters in all of the scripture. Anyway, God bless you. So sure enjoy uh, coming into your home. And I want to say goodbye to Dalim and the disciples. And I hope to see you soon. And God bless you. And remember, this is the Billion Soul Revival Harvest. And Jesus is coming again. Bye-bye now.